In the previous lecture, you learned how events bubble up the DOM tree. For example, clicking a list item also triggers a click event on the UL element containing the list item. This is useful because we can add an event listener to a parent element and let it handle events on its children. For example, an event listener on an unordered list can handle the click event for any of its children list items, even if there are hundreds of list items. But how does the parent know which child triggered the event? Well, when event handler is called, it receives an event object as its first argument. This object has some useful information about the event, as well as a few methods we can use to help us handle the event inside handler. So here's the MDN page for the event object. If you scroll down, you can see the properties and the methods available on this object. Now the property you'll probably use most often is target, which is a reference to the element that first received the event. For example, if you click on a list item, target would contain a reference to that list item. So let's have a look at this property in action. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM. And then open the index.html file in the browser. In the index.html file, remember to link app.js file. Now in the app.js file, first I'll comment out these handlers we wrote earlier. Commenting this code will allow us to prevent it from running while we try a little experiment. Then when we are done, we can uncomment to make the code active again. So first, let's add a temporary click handler to the document object. And inside we'll say console.log. And now let's pass an event parameter to our callback function. So that our callback function can use the event object. And inside the handler, we'll log out the target element. So I'll pass in event.target to the console.log. So now when any element on the page is clicked, a reference to that element will be logged out to the console. Thanks to all the click events bubbling up through the DOM tree to the document object. All right, I'll save the change. Refresh the page, open the JavaScript console, then you click on the remove last item button. As you can see, that element is logged out to the console. And we can verify that this is the item by hovering over it. And you see that the button is highlighted. Now if I click on the headline, on this paragraph, on this hide list button, on this show list button, any of the list items, and on this input element, as you can see, the event object is giving us a reference to the any individual element we click on. So now let's go back to app.js file. Delete this example handler. And we can now uncomment these codes we want to fix. Remember, these two handlers are attached to the containing div, but they need to access the element triggering the event to make the change to that element. So can you see how to use the event object we just learned about here to fix these two event handlers? I'll give you a tip. You'll need to add some extra code to ensure the behavior is only run for list item elements. And you can get any element's tag name from the tag name property like this. And keep in mind that the N in tag name is capitalized. You can also find the link from the description below in case you want to learn more about the tag name property. Go ahead and pause this video and see if you can figure out how to add the desired behavior to the list items. Alright, so now I'll show you my solution. Now the first thing to do is pass in the event parameter.
so the event object will be accessible inside the handlers. Then we need to get the specific element that is triggering the event. We can use the target property on the event object for this. So I'll replace list items square brackets at index i with event.target. I'll do the same for others. But there's one more problem. You see that these handlers will fire for any of the elements inside the div as well as for the div itself. And we only want this behavior to affect list items only. So let's add an if statement to each handler. That will only allow list items to have this behavior. As I mentioned earlier, we can get the tag name from the tag name property. So in the conditional type, event.target dot tag name strictly equal to and the tag name property returns a tag name in all uppercase letters so I'll type li in all uppercase letters I'll do the same for this one so now this code will only run for list items I'll save the change Refresh the page. If I mouse over the list items, as you can see, the behavior is exactly the same as before. The difference is there are only two handlers on the containing div instead of eight or more handlers on each list item. Even better, watch what happens if I remove the last item then re-add it. Good. The new list item still has the behavior attached to it. Alright, so up next, I'll teach you how to get reference to any element in the DOM.